My brothers and sisters, like I say, when you make a dua for your children, it will be a means of their goodness, inshallah. So don't use the supplication you have to destroy your kids, rather use it to build them. And then you get the supplication from your own children for you, subhanallah. I would love it if my children made dua for me on a daily basis. And then we have those parents who've passed on. If you have a mother or a father who's passed away, number one, I want to give you some good news. For those of you who are orphans or who grew up as orphans, I want to tell you the chances of Allah loving you are greater than those who are not orphans based on the fact that the most beloved unto Allah himself was an orphan. Allah chose for the one he loves the most that his father would die prior to his birth. And Allah chose for the one whom he loves the most that his mother would actually pass away in his infancy. So if you've lost your mother and your father, perhaps it's the love of Allah giving you an opportunity to succeed far beyond those who have both parents subhanallah subhanallah you thought of that and thereafter as you grow subhanallah as you grow and you see perhaps you may have lost your parents like I say it is your duty to pray for them the most powerful gift you can give a deceased parent is the simplest thing not complicated not complicated. When people say, my father passed away, what's the best thing I could do to help him? The answer is the simplest thing, but shaitan comes to you and says, no, that's too simple. I don't think it's gonna work. Why? If I were to ask you, what do you think is the best thing that would help your father or your mother who's passed away? You probably would come up with a list of very, very difficult things. But the hadith says the best that you could do for those parents of yours under normal circumstances is to pray for them, to pray for their forgiveness. That's it. You pray for their forgiveness. Imagine I just say, Oh Allah, forgive my father. He's passed away. Oh Allah, grant him Jannatul Firdaus. And you can repeat that again and again and again. No fixed number, no number of days that you need to do that for. It's just loose ended and it's up to you how much you want to say it. The more you repeat it, the more your father's benefiting in the hereafter. What to do just to pray for them, just to ask Allah's forgiveness for them, to ask Allah to have mercy on them, to grant them Jannah, etc, etc. That is the best thing you could ever do for those folks of yours who've passed on. But people say, are you sure? Just that? Yes. The problem with us, we're not used to supplicating, calling out to Allah. Allah makes it simple for us. The easiest thing is the most beneficial thing. But we want to think of complicated things. I remember a certain brother tell me, you know, I heard that there's a certain type of grass in Brazil. If I were to get it and put it on my father's grave, perhaps Allah will give him Jannah. I said, my brother, you'd rather have taken him and put him in Brazil if that was true. Allahu Akbar, I wonder where people come up with all this thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Perhaps that father was into football. Allah knows. But my brothers and sisters getting more serious. Look at it. You want your parents to be happy after death. You should try to visit some of their friends and try perhaps once in a while to inquire about some of the friends that they had when they were alive. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us this. Perhaps visit the old man your dad used to visit before he had passed away. And if you visit the old man, what will happen? You remember your father, you pray for your father and you're actually doing a good deed that your dad had started off and he taught you. And then you will have your children do the same one day.